Hey guys, good evening. Thank you very much for joining today. And we're going to continue with our class number three or session number three. Right, Asika, welcome everyone. I know that it's hard. I know that you had a day today. It was Monday. Well, it is Monday. It's still Monday, right? There was a lot of traffic. So many things going on today, but thank you very much for being here and on time. Okay. So just let me open up here session number three, right? And if you have questions uh, also, they will be more than welcome, guys. I I love, you know, um, students' questions, right? Um, that's the opportunity that we have to um, review what we have studied and put into practice what we're learning, right? So whenever you have doubts, whenever you have questions, you are more than welcome to go ahead and um, share that with us, right? Why not, okay? So thank you so much, guys. So let's go ahead and begin. And here we have, right, today is Monday, September 12th. Do not forget that this coming uh, Thursday, we have a holiday, right? So it's going to be uh, Independence Day, right? Independence Day, I'm sorry. And I hope you're going to have some time for you to relax a little bit. But more on to that once we get there, right? Um, we're going to continue with um, section number one, and we're going to try to have an introduction or kind of an introduction to section number two. Um, when it comes to, you know, the topics, actually, they are very, I would say, they, I mean, those topics are not short. Whenever we talked about simple past, whenever we talk about past events, right, and these type of structures, we're talking about, you know, uh, several things, right? So in this case, um, in section one, and let me go ahead and just have a quick overview, right, so you can have a better understanding when it comes to the um, to the course itself, right? In unit number one, we are supposed to be working with um, these, you know, um, what section where we are dividing, you know, uh, this or splitting, you know, simple pass into three things, right? And let's go ahead and name them. We're going to label them. And some of you were asking questions, you know, about a, well, no, actually one of you was asking a question about, you know, what what is going to be the clue for me to be able to identify which is the tense that we're talking about, right? So whenever uh, I said we talked about simple past. This is the umbrella, right? Es como la sombrilla. And under the umbrella, right, we have different tenses, right? So simple past is going to be the umbrella, but what do we have within it, right? Under the umbrella, we have a uh, uh, simple past of past simple, past simple, simple past is the same, right? Simple past of verb B, right? So we have verb B. So this is the umbrella we were saying, right? La sombrilla, and then we have simple pass of verb B, which is okay. Pasado simple del verbo ser o estar. ¿Por qué lo aclaro en español? Para que no nos confundamos, so you don't get confused, right? Then we have also um, pass, well, simple past, simple past of all the verbs, right? O sea, cualquiera que no sea el verbo to be goes in that category, right? So we got uh, pasado simple de los otros verbos que no son simple, que no son verbi, right? So there we got the information, right? So that's important to know. Y luego hay una combinación entre estos dos. No es que sean, no es que sea una combinación uh, just because, right? It's just uh, something that we need to know, right? And then there is something that we call past, right? Pero siempre debajo de esta sombrilla, right? We have past and we call it past continuous, right? Or past progressive, right? So with past continuous and past progressive, he will have a combination of two different things, okay? And as you know, obviously this is not the topic, by the way, no es el tema, por cierto, I'm just you know, uh, trying to uh, picture everything. And then we have past continuous or past progressive, right? Now, when we talk about past continuous or past progressive, it's kind of similar to the structure that we have in Spanish, right? 
right? When, when you say, right? Es que estaba viendo televisión cuando de repente escuché un ruido. I was watching TV when suddenly I've heard a noise, right? So there is where we use past continuous. Now, past continuous is a combination of these two things, right? So we're going to talk about verb B, last, other verbs, right? So here is the only time, guys, when we combined verbs, but that's a totally different story, right? Just for you to know. So here with the past simple, which is the umbrella, right? Don't forget that we have three different things, right? So past progressive or past continuous is the same as pasado. Nosotros le llamamos en español pasado progresivo o pasado continuo, ¿verdad? Continuo. Okay, so that's the way we use it in, in, in Spanish. Now, you know, it's kind of similar, it's bien similar si pensamos en la estructura en sí, right? So we use past continuous plus, you know, uh, a, a verb, right? Es que yo estaba escuchando. Other verbs, y aquí, por supuesto, agregamos algo que nosotros siempre le llamamos ing, right? Okay, teacher, can you give me examples? Yes, I can, okay? So I, well, Let's see. They were at home yesterday, right? I was in class last, oops, last Friday, because it's true. You were in class with me last Friday, right? So simple past of all the verbs teacher. Um, yeah, definitely. So I had a wonderful weekend, right? I hope you did, <laughs> right? Um, I ate, um, what? Delicious, delicious food at my grandma's, right? Okay, in la casa de mi abuela, right? So I ate delicious food at my grandma's, okay? Um, and I can continue, right? So what, well, the past continuous is different, right? Because actually with past continuous, we combine these two things, right? So I can say, I was watching TV, on Saturday evening. Okay, Saturday evening. Okay, I was watching TV on Saturday evening. Um, they, well, no, no, she was uh, listening to music, right? Listening to music um, yesterday um, morning, right? I don't know if, I'd have, if that happens to you guys, but sometimes, you know, Sunday morning, when, whenever I'm preparing breakfast, I like to listen, you know, to music or even lunch, right? So I don't know, let's just set those examples. So there you go, right? So here, guys, here it is, I would say, um, you are able to go ahead and combine them because here you need them to be together so you can express your idea with past continuous or past progressive. But whenever we're talking about the other two tenses, just be, uh, be careful, okay? Because we're talking about two separate things. Entonces, ya cuando separamos esos dos, que fue lo que dijimos la semana pasada, entonces ahora ya podemos hablar de eso que se combina. Por supuesto, no es parte de la, del, del curso, ¿verdad? No es parte de la clase, pero solo quería... Eh, um, just clarify that, right? I just wanted to clarify it. So there you go. I easily compartí in the chat. You can screenshot, take the screenshot, right? So you can have that info with you. Okay. So, well, here in section number one, okay, you went through different stages, okay? Now, in section number one, it began with the... Um, with the simple past of other verbs, que ya es lo que vamos a ver en este momento, right? Entonces, después de la clase de hoy, chicos, ya tenemos, tendríamos que haber llenado todo lo que es knowledge check y vamos a hablar un poquito acerca de used to. Teacher, ¿por qué considera usted que esta, esta unidad, esta sección es un poco más larga? Porque tiene temas que son pesados, right? We're talking about a lot of things and they are not that simple, right? Entonces, por eso les compartí unos links last Friday so you can work on your own para que usted siga practicando porque... Eh, Pues in practica, it's very difficult like, to get used to it, right? Practice with songs, practice with videos, practice with someone who speaks English, right? Um, 
there must be someone there at work, a friend in your house, a family member, or a, fam a relative, right, that can speak English or at least can help you to, you know, practice it. Now, um, let's go ahead and move here to the presentation. So last uh, class, last Friday, we were talking about past simple. Um, and you have there um, verbs, you know, um, that and it, it did. Entonces, esa sombría, chicos, es tan grande, right? Que incluso aquí en esta parte en la que yo ya les hablaba de verb be with other verbs acá, todavía se desglosa un tema más. And that is something that we call regular and irregular verbs, okay? Entonces, as you can see, you know, there are so many things in just one course, I mean, one uh, section. So when we have regular and irregular verbs, it is very important, guys, for you to remember the rules, okay? No es que yo solo le voy a agregar ID a todo, a cualquier verbo, no, right? Y ahí es donde viene lo que, un poquito de los que yo les compartí el viernes pasado. Les compartí dos canciones. Por supuesto, no son las mejores, pero um, hay algunos de nosotros que, que, que aprendemos así con sonidos que son bien catchy. Catchy, que es catchy, dicho que se nos quedan pegados en ahí, se nos quedan y andamos practicando. O sea, entonces, whenever you hear those catchy sounds, okay, you can start practicing them. And but if you're not into, you know, pronunciations or songs, you have lists, right? If you have if you if you have lists, you can print them. Las puede imprimir, las puede laminar o andarlas ahí cuando de repente va en el transporte a su trabajo, right? Or if you have you know some time you can read them, and that's it, right? And then the other video that I share with you about the pronunciation. Yo no digo watch it, right? Yo digo watched. Yo no digo work it. Digo worked. Right? This is, we have to be very careful whenever we pronounce them. Okay? So, uh, right now it's uh, A13. Before moving on, antes de irme ya directo al tema, chicos, ¿hay alguna pregunta acerca de, de la plataforma? ¿Algún ejercicio con el que hayan tenido problemas? Recuerden que el día de mañana es martes y ya tendríamos que haber terminado la sección 1, right? Por supuesto, ustedes no se preocupen que yo siempre voy a explicar los temas, ¿verdad? Aunque mañana terminemos, yo voy a abarcar todo. But do you have a question about any exercise, specific, you know, vocabulary, um, something in the platform? Recuerden que yo estoy aquí para contestar sus preguntas, right? No, teacher. Not yet. Not yet. Ok, yeah. todavía no. Okay. Very good. Okay. Okay, excellent. So not yet. Excellent. Uh, well, let's go ahead and continue then, right? Not yet. Now, here, guys, we have, uh, you know, something that is wonderful. Aquí tenemos algo maravilloso, right? En ese cuadrito que tienen ahí. Y que es eso maravilloso, teacher, that with simple past, right? Voy a, voy a escuchar bien, casi como una saleswoman, ¿verdad? You don't, you don't complicate yourself. Right, with simple past. Why, teacher? Because if you have present simple, guys, with present simple, you need to be very careful. And, you know, like if you're walking on eggshells, right? No sé, así como que. Super cuidadoso whenever we use present simple. Why? Because you need to identify if it's he or she. So the verb, you know, goes with ES or S. If it's um, negative, is it don't, is it doesn't, is it does, is it do, pero con simple pass, forget about it, right? Simple pass is a lot simpler, right? Why, teacher? Because I don't have to worry about the subject. No importa aquí si es primera persona singular, si es tercera persona singular, si es plural, it doesn't matter. Ok, no importa porque con simple pass yo no me preocupo por el subject que estoy utilizando, sino más bien del verbo que voy a poner en que voy a escribir en pasado o que voy a usar en pasado. Bueno, I don't know if you have observed, y ya nos vamos a ir moviendo, ok. I don't know if you have observed that um, whenever guys were talking about simple past, you only work it 
or you only use verbs in simple past in affirmative sentences. Teacher, o sea, que hay que aprenderse todos esos verbos, todas esas reglas y solo lo vamos a usar en, el, en las oraciones afirmativas. Es correcto, right? Why, teacher? Well, because if I have negative sentences and if I have questions in simple past, vienen dos ayudantes. ¿Y cuáles son esos ayudantes? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Didn't and did, right? Didn't and did. Esos son los ayudantes que yo necesito, right? Did for questions and didn't for negative sentences, okay? So, I have Two helpers, right? Two ayudantes, two helpers. And those helpers are the ones that come to the rescue, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the examples. It says, for regular verbs, the past simple is often ed, right? Um, teacher, pero cuando voy a saber yo si es uh, un verbo que, que es regular o irregular? Bueno, la forma más fácil es aprendiéndonos los irregulares primero. <laughs> right? You learn them by heart very quickly and you learn to identify which is regular, I mean, any or irregular. But also you can use a dictionary. Eh, puede descargar un diccionario. Yo les puedo dar una recomendación de diccionario que es el que yo tengo aquí en mi teléfono. And you type the verb and it tells you. Ahí le dice, ¿verdad? If it's regular or irregular. Así que... That's one, one, you know, uh, tool that you can use. You can um, use a dictionary or you just, you know, um, compare that to the, to the list uh, with the list that you have of irregular verbs. Now, what else? Um, if you see, guys, take a look at the verbs. Aquí hay un ejemplo por cada una de esas reglas, okay? So here you have work, worked, brush brushed, star, started, dance, danced, stay, stayed, need, needed, right? So what does that mean, teacher? That whenever we have, oh yeah, tell me, Mari. Teacher, why in the, when, when you say start and started and need and needed, you can use e, I, D, I, and D. And another, and another, uh, and another uh, uh, word, uh, maybe dance and stay. You did, you, you, you can use, or you, you don't use. Exactly, that's a very good question. And uh, you know, uh, to do that, I need. I'm going to. Um, voy a nada más a. Um, ¿Cómo les puedo explicar? <sighs> I will explain it, but here. Aquí les compartí un video que explica las razones por qué, right? Yo voy a tratar de hacerlo very quickly, pero solo se lo voy a marcar aquí en el chat. ¿Dónde está? Permítanme. Ok, está dentro de la lista que les compartí el viernes, pero ahí se los puse solo el, el, el que va, ¿verdad? Please, guys, if you really, really, really want to understand, you know, how we pronounce verbs in simple past, please play that video, ¿ok? Uh, but ya van a ver que va a ser mucho más claro. And the reason why, Mario, the reason why is because we have voiced and voiceless sounds. What is that, teacher? Now, whenever we have voiced sounds, those voiced sounds are the ones that whenever you produce them, your throat vibrates. There's a vibration on your throat whenever you pronounce those voiced sounds, okay? For example, teacher, k worked, right? Then we have z, right? If you, if you pronounce, you know, the sound of that specific letter, Z, 
right? You can feel the vibration. You, you need to put your hand on your throat and you're able to feel the vibration of some letters. Now, voiceless sounds are the ones that do not produce vibration on your throat, right? No se produce vibración con los sonidos que son voiceless, right? So whenever we have voiceless sounds, we're going to use certain pronunciation. Whenever we have voiced sounds, we're going to use the other type of pronunciation, right? So we have t, que es una, está representada como una t, y luego tenemos th, que está representada con una d, como en brushed, brushed, right? Uh, and danced, right? Now, in start and need, that's a different thing, right? And you will see that in the video, the woman explains that whenever we have a verb ending in T sound, T or D sound, D, right? We're going to add an extra syllable, right? Entonces, eso son, ese es el único caso en el que yo voy a agregar una sílaba extra. ¿Cómo así, teacher? I don't say start, ni tampoco digo start, and at the end, I add a D. No, I said started, or you can say started or started. And we don't say need, ni tampoco decimos need, y agregamos una del final porque no es posible, right? Entonces yo digo needed, right? So all the verbs ending in T sound and the sound, you are going to add an extra syllable whenever you pronounce them, right? So that's the only different different thing, right? There is that we have three different categories, right? And those three categories include voiced sounds, voiceless sounds, and you know the ones ending in t and t sound. Okay, so that's the reason why all the verbs ending in t sound and d sounds have an extra syllable and are not like the voiced or voiceless sounds okay i don't know if i answered your question mario oh, i'm sorry i didn't see that i was first, first teacher okay <laughs> well but anyways uh mario i really invite you to watch the video you will see that it will it will make a lot more sense once you watch it okay se lo recomiendo se lo recomiendo muchísimo i love it de hecho se fue el que me enseñó a mí acerca de eso right so it, it will be very useful okay so moving on now that we have you know a better idea on those two categories that we have regular and irregular verbs um there you have some examples now in la parte de arriba tenemos ejemplos as you can see right verbs ending in a consonant like k, right porque eso es importante chicos aquí no hablamos de vocales hablamos de sonidos right eh, vocales pues son cinco pero sonidos de vocales son un montón verdad entonces here we don't talk about I mean, uh, no, no hablamos del nombre de la letra que está ahí, de la consonante o, o vocal. Hablamos de los sonidos, pero es, termina en k sound, right? Work, right? Then we have brushed, ending in sh, right? Brushed. Then we have start, t sound, right? Dance, we have a, a vowel at the end, right? Dance. We have stayed, right? We have a consonant here, y, right? Need, we have a consonant at the end, at the end, I'm sorry. So what happens? ¿Qué sucede cuando yo tengo verbos que terminan en Y, pero van precedidos de una, de una vocal? That's different. Ahí es diferente, right? Si yo tengo verbos terminados en Y, precedidos por una eh, vocal, entonces yo no aplico regla, pero si yo tengo verbos que terminan en Y, precedidos por una consonante, aplico una regla. What is, what is that rule, teacher? The rule says that you're going to replace the letter Y with an I. O sea, reemplazo la Y por una I latina, right? And after that, I add ED, como en try, tried, study, studied, right? Copy, copied, stop, stop plan, planned, right? So there, 
ok dice pero qué sucede con stop qué sucede con plant ok well in that case guys we consider the first right as 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 how can i say it it's like a one sound es como un solo sonido right stop plan right whenever we have you know these type of verbs verdad que son en sí monosílabos aunque en realidad se escucha un sonido a la par vamos a duplicar la última consonante y vamos a agregar id hay más ejemplos, sí, yo creo que esos son dos más comunes, ¿verdad? Creo que hay otros dos por ahí que son comunes, pero esos son los dos más comunes. Stopped and planned, right? So, there you have some examples. Can I, can I have a volunteer to read the examples? Volunteer to read the examples. Me, teacher. Go ahead. I brush my teeth every morning. This morning, I brushed my teeth. Mm -hmm. Continue. Can you hear me? Oh. Sigo. Yeah, continue. Okay. Adam work work. Mm -hmm. In a restaurant from 2003 mm -hmm. to 2010. Mm -hmm. Yesterday it rained. 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 All morning it stopped at noon. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed. The party last night. We danced a lot and talked, talked to a lot of people. The party finished at midnight. Very good, right? So let's see. Um, the first one was very good, but that brushed, brushed. Okay, the second one worked, worked rained rained stopped stopped right enjoyed danced talked finished right so very good job on that right very good uh, job with the pronunciation of um you know verbs in past okay so guys remember si el verbo no termina ni en te ni en D sound, right? No, di, no agreguemos es, esa extra sílaba porque yo no voy a decir worked. No voy a agregar una extra sílaba porque no la necesita. Digo worked. Yo no digo brushed. No agrego una sílaba extra. Yo digo brushed. No digo rained. Esa sílaba extra no es necesaria ahí, ¿verdad? Rained, right? Stopped. Same thing, right? Enjoyed. Danced. No digo talk, digo talked, right? Talked. Entonces, esa sílaba extra solamente dejémosla ahí guardadita para los regulares que terminan en t, en t sound, ¿ok? Any questions so far? Preguntas hasta el momento. Ok. Very good. Bien, right, chicos, let's go ahead and work in an exercise, ¿ok? Let's work in the following exercise. I will give you four minutes, okay? Four minutes for you to be able to, to complete the exercise. I'm going to set the timer. Voy a poner aquí el timer. Tome captura y solamente la, solamente los, las respuestas, okay?
Okay, so time's up. Four minutes are gone, okay? So let's go ahead and see if you were able to answer them correctly, okay? If you want to participate, please raise your hand, right? And let's go ahead and look for the answers. So what about number one? Thank you so much, Daisy. Go ahead. I brought my teeth three times three times yesterday. Okay, very good. I brushed right my teeth. Very good. Excellent. What about number two? Yes, Iris. Iris. Yeah, good night. Good night. Bueno, en este caso es good evening, perdón. Es good evening, el saludo, good night, Ay. la despedida. Sí. Ya se está despidiendo, right? Okay. Sí. Lo siento. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. It was too hot in the room, so I opened a window. Very good, I opened a window. Thank you so much. Very kind, Iris. What about number three, Mario? Okay. Um, the movie was very long. It started at 9 and finished at 12. Very good. It started at 9 and finished at 12. Thank you so much. What about the next one, Saidi? Number four, and then Carla. Okay. Um, when she was a child, Matilda wanted to be a pet. Excellent, very good. She wanted to be a pet. What about number five, Carla? Okay. The accident happened last Wednesday evening. Correct. The accident happened last Wednesday evening. Thank you so much. What about number six, seven, and eight? Six, seven, and eight. Iris, tiene su mano levantada. Va a seguir participando? No, lo siento. <laughs> Don't worry, it's okay. So, uh, anyone else? Three more chances here to get the right um, answer? No? Okay, very good. Don't worry, I'll show you the answers then. So, it's a beautiful day today, but yesterday, right? It rained all day, right? So, it rained all day. We enjoyed our vacation last year. So we stayed at a very nice place. Adam's grandfather died when he was 90 years old. How is that, right? He died when he was 90 years old. Okay, guys. So here we're talking about the affirmative way. Estamos hablando, chicos, de la forma afirmativa de past simple, right? Eh, so, in this case, we're going to... Uh, dígame, eh, Meili. Que en la parte de Matilda, sí. eh, que es que ella quería ser un vet, que yeah. es veterinaria. Yeah, a veterinaria. Oh, ¿no? okay. <laughs> But in English, you, you know, um, you have just... Uh, uh, it's like cropped, está como cortada, it's just vet, right? So you go to the vet, uh -huh. oh, al veterinario. Okay. Okay. okay, gracias. You're welcome. Veamos. Now when it comes to the um, um, the structure, right? As you could see, we have, it's being simple, right? The structure is subject plus verb, right? Solo que en este caso, Pay attention. The verb is in past simple. Aquí es el verbo si sí está en past simple, ¿verdad? Plus complement. Cualquier complemento se agrega aquí. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, eh, como les digo, este tema es bien largo. Como quisiera tener más clases para poder explicar cada cosa pues, en su día, pero vamos a hacerlo la forma, de una forma simple. Ahora bien, esa es la forma afirmativa, chicos. This is the affirmative, affirmative form. ¿Ok? Entonces, si usted se fija, esta es la parte quizás más compleja, eso es todo. ¿Por qué, teacher? Porque luego in the negative form, ¿ok? Prácticamente es 
casi que lo mismo, con la única diferencia es que este verbo ya no va en pasado, sino que este verbo va en algo que se le llama base form o forma base, o sea, sin ser conjugado, right? Y in between, ¿verdad? Entre ellos va a ir un auxiliar, que en este caso es didn't, ¿ok? So tenemos un subject, un auxiliary que es didn't, luego tenemos un verb in, a, in the base form and a complement, ¿ok? Ahora bien, con las preguntas, teacher, bueno, con las preguntas hay un cambio, ¿verdad? Un cambio y vamos a ocupar esta base acá. Para las questions, ¿ok? Para questions tenemos acá eh, que hay un, hay un switch, hay un cambio y ese cambio es acá. El auxiliar pasa a tomar el primer lugar, antes el subject, then we have the subject, then we got the verb in base form, we have any complement, and then we have the uh, question mark. Teacher, can you give me examples? Yes, I can. So with affirmative sentences, okay? I, I, let me put this away. I went, to the supermarket, right? Supermarket yesterday, right? I went to the supermarket yesterday early teacher because I had a lot to do. I had to go to church. I had to go to the market, to the supermarket. I have to visit my friends, etc. right? Or I can say I worked, right? I worked on Saturday teacher, I didn't have Saturday off, so I worked, I worked on Saturday, ¿ok? Entonces, si usted se fija, acá tenemos un irregular verb y acá tenemos un regular verb, ¿ok? Now, it happens the same. Ahora vengo yo y me las, me traigo estas dos oraciones para acá. Me vengo para el negative form y aquí pues ya no los necesito. ¿Por qué, teacher? Porque ya, si yo agrego didn't acá, Ya no necesito a went, necesito go. I didn't go to the supermarket yesterday. Si aquí agrego didn't, right? Ya no necesito a worked, necesito work. I didn't work on Saturday, right? Entonces, we have to be very careful with the verbs. Prácticamente pongámoslo así, ¿verdad? La, el hassle, como la molestia que nos hacemos es nada más en las oraciones afirmativas. ¿Por qué? Porque me debe sean negativas o preguntas. Ya no necesitamos más esa forma de, 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 de pasado simple. And with the questions. Bueno, me traigo para acá, ¿verdad? Estas oraciones, lo mismo. Vamos a convertirlas en preguntas. Bueno, first, right? I'm going to add my auxiliary at the beginning, right? Okay, did I go to the supermarket yesterday? Como que de repente digamos que salió, ¿verdad? La pasó súper bien, llegó a su casa, se durmió, eh, no encontró las cosas en el, en, la, en el refrigerador y se queda, did I go to the supermarket yesterday? Y le va a pasar lo que... A más de alguno le ha pasado que se le olvidó bajar las cosas del carro, pues ahí está. Se arruinaron, ¿verdad? Algunas cosas de refrigeración. Entonces, lo mismo. Did I work on Saturday? No me acuerdo, ¿verdad? Did I work on Saturday? Que se van a andar olvidando usted si trabajo o no trabajo un sábado, right? So, did I work on Saturday? ¿Ok? Entonces, acá ya podemos ver que la forma, ¿verdad? Negativa y que la pregunta ya no necesitan del pasado simple. En sí, del verbo en sí en pasado simple, pero sí necesitan de un auxiliar que es el que lleva el mensaje. Si yo digo didn't en una oración automáticamente la persona que esté escuchando va a saber que estoy hablando en pasado y que esa oración es negativa. Si alguien escucha did con la estructura que estamos viendo en pantalla, did, subject, verb in base form and complement, la persona automáticamente va a comprender que le estoy haciendo una pregunta en pasado simple. That's why it is very important that whenever we talk about, you know, past events, we do it the, 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 um, the, the correct way, right? Entonces, ¿hay alguna pregunta, chicos, hasta el momento? ¿O estamos claros ahí? Y se lo voy a pasar en... Yes, teacher, se comprende. 
Bye. Perfect. Entonces ahí les, les paso los, las cosas. La información. Toma el screenshot. Now, let's go ahead and. Oh, bueno, no sé si alguien tenía preguntas, ¿no? No, no, seguros. No hay, no hay ningún problema. Yo me detengo. Si usted tiene una pregunta, yo me detengo. No problem. Vamos a ver si más adelante nos da como la pauta, la lección para que podamos entrar a los breakout rooms y ya podamos ponerlo en práctica. Pero primero sí necesito pues explicar bien el, el tema. Como les digo, son varios y it's something that we need to be uh, careful with. Ahora bien, eh, with the irregular verbs, chicos, with the irregular verbs, eh, the past tense is not a D, right? Entonces, el pasado ya no va a ser así como lo que vimos, pero por ello yo les compartí unas listitas de verbos, right? So, I share with you two lists and one of them even has the translation into Spanish, right? Una tiene eh, la traducción en español que creo que es la que estoy viendo acá. Yep. So, this one has a translation in English, right? Se lo voy a volver a pasar de nuevo. And the other one has the, uh, I mean, it's a shorter one. Es más cortita, pero igual es, es muy útil, right? So, es como una bien concisa, digamos así. Entonces, eh, that's what you have to do, guys. You have to practice. Now, let's take a look at the ones that we have, okay, um, on screen. Um, teacher, ¿hay reglas para esto? No. No hay reglas. Probablemente alguna que otra familia que se parezca como terminan, pero no hay reglas. So, all what you have to do, guys, is to learn them by heart. Okay? We'll type this in the chat. Learn, learn them by heart. Okay? Aprender de corazón, teacher. Aprenderme de corazón, no. Learn by heart significa memorizar. Es un, es un, es un phrasal verb, right? So, learned by heart es memorizar, ok, ahí se lo pongo en el, en el chat, ok, so you have to learn them by heart, ok, so uh, as you can see, right, some of them will have kind of, you know, um, similarities, but most of them won't, así que en silencio, verdad, I'm going to uh, read it y usted acompáñeme sin activar su micrófono para que no nos escuchemos pues todos hablando al mismo tiempo, ok, so begin, Began, break, broke, bring, brought, build, built, buy, boat, catch, caught, come, came, do, did, drink, drank, eat, ate, fall, fell, find, found, fly, flew, forget, forgot, get, got, give, gave, go, went, have, had, hear, heard, know, knew, or knew, right? Leave, left, lose, I mean, lose, Lost, make, made, meet, met, pay, paid, put, put, read, read, ring, rank, say, said, see, sew, sell, sold, seat, sat. Sleep, slept, speak, spoke, stand, stood, take, took, tell, told, think, thought, win, won, write, wrote. Okay, so the more you practice them, the better you will become at it, right? So That's the reason why I recommend listening to the uh, songs. O tal vez esas canciones que les compartí, no mucho, teacher, no me gusta. No, don't worry. I 
más videos, ¿verdad? Probablemente que, que le parezca como más a su gusto, en donde usted puede practicar verbs in past. Teacher, ¿y cómo puedo hacer eso que no tengo tiempo? Vaya, look at this. This is what I, I recommend. Hay aplicaciones en donde ustedes pueden escuchar podcasts, ¿verdad? que incluyan lecciones así cortitas, básicas sobre eh, Simple Past. Y si no, busque un video, uno que le guste y descárguelo. Y cuando vaya en el bus, yo sé que les encanta escuchar música, pero de repente, pues mejor ponga el video y vaya practicando la pronunciación de sus verbos mientras usted va manejando, mientras va en el transporte, etc. Right? Also look for videos or songs, you know, that include Simple Past, right? Todos tenemos una canción que va a incluir Simple Past, right? Entonces, look for that song, listen to it, pay attention to the structure, and you will be able to understand, you know, uh, better uh, the, the different elements that you will need to include. Okay. So, en esta parte, pues, chicos, es bien difícil como, como venir y yo te ayudo porque, o sea, no me las puedo memorizar, ¿verdad? Eh, por cada uno, pero sí yo confío en que ustedes van a hacer su parte en trabajar los verbs, ¿ok? So, there you have some examples. Can I have a volunteer to read the examples, please? Volunteer to read the examples. Thank you so much, Iris. Go ahead. I usually get up early this morning. I go on a team or club. Continue, please. At 10, 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay. They did a lot of work last week. Mm -hmm. Rose went to the movie with last week. T twice, twice. Twice, twice. Uh -huh. Okay. And we come in the room, took off his coat, and sat down. Very good. Andrew came, right? Because it was in past. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Iris. Now, here, guys, as you can see, es la misma, es la misma, la misma estructura. You see? Teacher, entonces quiere decir que. Estas fórmulas que usted nos compartió es para regulares e irregulares. Sí. ¿Qué es lo que va a cambiar, teacher? Esto. Esto de acá es lo único que va a cambiar. ¿Ok? Aquí es donde va a ir el perpo, ya sea regular o irregular, en pasado simple. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, uh, the formula is the same, even if it's a regular verb or irregular verb. Todo lo que cambia es esta piececita de acá, de los bueno, ese elemento, ¿verdad? Dentro de la oración, que es el que, el que usted va a, con el que usted va a tener cuidado y va a agregar el verbo en simple past. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, teacher, ¿lo mismo pasa con, lo, con, los, con los negativas? Sí. Uh, como usted puede ver, aquí tengo uno um, irregular y lo hicimos con, luego con uno regular. O sea, lo que quedó demostrado acá, ¿verdad? Es de que las, los mismos elementos son los que yo voy a necesitar con ambos tipos de verbo, ¿ok? Si es irregular, ya ven que es lo mismo. Si es regular, es lo mismo. Irregular, la misma estructura. Irregular, perdón, regular, lo mismo. La pregunta es igual. Si es irregular, va a ser la misma estructura. Si es irregular, igual también. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, no sé si hay alguna pregunta, chicos, hasta el momento. No. Ok. Veamos. Eh... Eh, yo sí tengo una, teacher. Dígame, Perdón. Dígame. No, no, le comprendí, no le comprendí muy bien, bye. Uh -huh. eh, dice usted que va a ser lo mismo eh, en, en la forma afirmativa. Eh, pasado, solo que sería... Eh, en verbo irregular. No. Pero siempre eh, sería. Uy, perdón, disculpe que lo interrumpa. Continúe con su pregunta. Ah, sería el subject eh, más el verbo en pasado, ya sea regular o irregular, más el complemento. Esa parte que dijo, sí está correcta. Lo primero que dijo, no. ¿Verdad? Pero la primera, Ajá. eso que acaba de decir usted, usted mismo se acaba de corregir y lo hizo perfecto. Eh, así que, good job. 
Exactly. We were saying that uh, it's going to be the same for regular and irregular. ¿verdad? Si ya se, se son irregulares o irregulares, las mismas, los mismos elementos son los que aplican para todos los verbos de esa forma. Así como se lo acaba de explicar en su segunda parte de la pregunta, ¿verdad? Así es como lo vamos a hacer. Eh, va a ser un subject y el verbo es el que yo voy a utilizar en simple past en las oraciones afirmativas, ya sea regular o irregular. Siempre va a ser el mismo. Uh -huh. okay. right, vamos a poner otro par de ejemplos, Miguel, para que quede uh, claro. A ver, dígame usted, eh, regáleme un verbo irregular y uno irregular, por favor. Eh, podría ser eh, regular. Uh -huh. eh, enjoy. Right, enjoy, muy bien. Y regáleme un... Eh, ¿Ese es regular? ¿Uno irregular? Eh, un irregular... Eh, Irregular. Ese que me acaba de dar es regular. Regular. Irregular, irregular podría ser eh, eh, for, forget. Ok, forget. Muy bien. So enjoyed. Ok. Um, she. Ya usamos I. So she enjoyed. Oops. She. Ay, ¿Qué me pasa hoy con el typing? <laughs> she enjoyed the party. Last night, right? So let's say that I, it was my birthday and we were celebrating and I enjoyed. So you say she enjoyed the party last night, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what about with the verb forget, right? So I can say something like I forgot, right? Yeah. I forgot to pack, right? My what? K. Ah, huh? my what? My K, no. Um, yeah, to pack. Or my password. Empacar, empacar. I forgot to pack my clothes. Uh -huh. Okay, olvide okay. empacar la ropa, right? And today we have a trip. Hoy es el viaje and I forgot to pack my clothes, right? So uh, I'm in trouble. Estoy en problemas, right? So as you can see, tenemos los mismos elementos, ¿verdad? Y tenemos un verbo regular y un irregular. A eso es a lo que yo me refiero cuando digo que son los mismos elementos, no importando si sea regular o irregular el verbo, y que solamente acá es donde yo voy a utilizar verbos en pasado. Si ya me bajo con esas dos, dos oraciones, ¿verdad? Acá va a ser diferente. ¿Ok? ¿Por qué? Porque ya voy a utilizar didn't. Por lo tanto, va a ser la misma información. Right? So in this case, she didn't, right? So she didn't, oops, didn't. Ya no puedo decir enjoyed porque estaría incorrecta. Es como que estuviese diciendo lo mismo dos veces, ¿verdad? Es como redundant, right? O redundante, como decimos en español. Entonces, she didn't enjoy the party last night. Parecía como que no se sentía bien, probablemente no estaba bien de salud. So she didn't enjoy the party. So, de repente vengo yo, ¿verdad? Y me pregunta, hey, um, do, you pack, do you pack your clothes for a trip? ¿Verdad? And I say, yeah, obviously, duh, right? I didn't forget okay. to pack my clothes. ¿Qué le pasa, verdad? Yo siempre estoy preparada y yo tengo ya todas mis cosas listas. So, no, I didn't forget to pack my clothes, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I take these two, right, again, and I brag, I mean, bring them here, okay, with a question form, and that's going to be the same, right? Yo sé que comienzo siempre con mi auxiliar. Vamos a moverlo para acá. Y pues acá ya no necesito Diden porque no es negativa, ¿verdad? Did she enjoy the party last night? Oh, she did. She had a wonderful time and it was, it was great. Did I forget to pack my clothes, right? No, I didn't, right? I'm always ready. I was born ready, right? Nacía lista, ¿verdad? Así de que, that's the way we're going to do it. It doesn't matter if it's regular or irregular, okay? You're going to do it that way. No sé si contesta su pregunta, Miguel. Sí, teacher. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Very good. Excellent. So, obviously, guys, I mean, I have more, 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 and more material, but, I mean, the idea here is also to, uh, for you to... Um, for you to know, right, how much you have um, moved throughout the course, right? So in this case, I'll show you here very quickly, right? A donde ya nos encontramos. 
Si usted se fija, esto es lo que ustedes eh, vieron en el video de la plataforma. De acuerdo. Entonces, esta información en esa casa, en esa, en esa, ¿cómo se puede decir? Cuadrito pequeñito está todo lo que hemos visto durante estas clases prácticamente, right? Es lo que encierra todo eso. Estamos viendo acá dos cosas o dos secciones que son bien importantes. Dice, pero nosotros ya vimos afirmativo, negativo y pregunta. Es correcto. Ya vimos afirmativo, negativo y pregunta porque eh, en mi caso, pues yo prefiero hacerlo así. Prefiero que veamos las, las tres cosas para que entendamos cómo funciona y pues ya luego vamos a tener tiempo para detenernos un poquito con las preguntas, ¿ok? Entonces, conclusion, ¿verdad? We said that we have an umbrella. Tenemos una sombrilla y dijimos que esa sombrilla es simple past, ¿verdad? Y que dentro de simple past tenemos... Eh, tenemos tres diferentes categorías, right? Tenemos simple past o verb B, ¿verdad? Que solo con el verbo ser, uy, aquí faltaba una letra Friday. <coughs> que es con el verbo ser o estar nada más. Ser o estar. Yo estuve en la fiesta ayer. Ella estaba en la casa de mi mamá, ¿verdad? Eh, etc. Ser o estar. Él puede solo. Dijimos que es el chico independiente porque no necesita auxiliares. Él solito puede ser positivo, negativo y pregunta. Luego dijimos que la segunda forma es simple pass of other verbs. Right? Entonces, todos los demás verbos que no sean el verbo to be van a entrar en esta category o categoría. Right? Entonces, dentro de esa category, we have also two types of verbs. Tenemos los regular verbs and irregular verbs, right? Y decíamos que dentro de esa categoría, pues, sí hay auxiliares que son los que nos ayudan, pues, con las oraciones, que en este caso es didn't para negativos y did para preguntas. Y luego hablamos de una tercera categoría, ¿verdad? O tercer tense, ¿verdad? Que no, es, no lo vamos a ver porque no, ahorita no está dentro de esta sección, por supuesto, pero es lo que llamamos past continuous or past progressive, right? Y aquí sí, no podemos como, eh, podemos involucrar, ¿verdad? El verb be con el resto de los verbos. Aquí ya no trabajan solos, aquí ellos dos hacen equipo y trabajan juntos para hacer el past continuous. Lo mismo sucede en español. Es la misma estructura que en español. Yo estaba limpiando la casa cuando ella llegó, ¿verdad? Él estaba cocinando cuando el teléfono sonó. Entonces, es the same, verbo ser o estar, más un gerundio, ¿ok? Que es lo que uh, utilizamos en español. So, the same happens in English. Ahí sí lo vamos a utilizar, ¿de acuerdo? Entonces, chicos, eso es más o menos un poquito acerca de Simple Past. Los invito a finalizar la sección, ¿verdad? Eh, de la plataforma y a empezar a movernos a la siguiente. El día de mañana yo voy a hablar un poquito acerca de used to, ¿verdad? Que es lo que, decir, lo que en español significa solía. Yo solía leer eh, tres horas a la semana y hoy pues ya no puedo porque no me queda tiempo. Yo solía visitar a mis abuelitos que vivían fuera de San Salvador, pero pues ya no tengo tiempo para salir fuera de San Salvador, etc. Entonces de eso vamos a hablar un poquito mañana. Igual, si de repente se encuentra con alguna pregunta dentro de la plataforma, por favor apunte la sección y el número de ejercicio. Y aquí con mucho gusto durante la sesión yo contesto su pregunta. Así que, thank you very much guys for joining today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience. And let's meet tomorrow. Okay. So have a good night and take care. Bye. Bye. Okay. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a good night too. Thank Bye. you. Likewise, guys.